We're getting into a little bit of preaching there as well. Are you thinking about becoming a pastor? Listen, it's funny you say that because I know a good friend who said, um, stay, you're always studying, you're always in school. What's next? Are you going to go into theology? Well, um, not really. <laughs> okay, well. I need all the prayers I can get. I need all the legal help I can get. So you know what? I'll be keeping your number as close as possible in my phone. Like, subscribe, and share to Voices of Linden TV. Welcome to another edition of the Let's Talk Show. I'm your host, Andrew James, and tonight I'm pleased to have with us in the studio via Zoom, Miss Stay Allen, a former McKenzie High School student, year 1981 to 1987. Miss Allen is currently a senior program analyst in the state of New York. Please advise that Miss Allen was just also, congratulations, Ms. Allen. You were just successful in your bar examination in the state of New York. I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Stay Allen. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. It's indeed an honor to be a guest on your show this evening. Very nice to have you. So, Ms. Allen, can you tell us a little bit about your um, memories growing up in the town of Linden, please? Oh, certainly, Andrew. Um, I was born in McKenzie Hospital, so I'm a real true bred, bred born Lindener. I mm -hmm. attended McKenzie High, um, High School, but that was after I completed my primary education at the McKenzie Primary School. Um, the fond memories I have of growing up in Linden is the, the large degree of community spirit that existed during my time, um, you know, as an infant all into being a teenager. I recall clearly that um, families and neighbors all acted as though they were relatives of each other. I can recall that um, the home where I grew up with my grandparents, the doors were seldom locked. We were always, you know, back and forth, neighbors, friends, and to some degree, I think it's the community spirit that is always resonates with me wherever I go. I always think about the, the times I had growing up in Linden. Very nice to said. Anyone you want to shout out from the town of Linden or specifically from McKenzie High School? Well, when it comes to um, McKenzie High School, um, I was a kind of a, um, an all-rounder, or as, um, in our colloquial terms, I was considered a pot salt. So I had <laughs> friends that were in class higher than myself. I had friends that were, um, were in classes below me. And I had, of course, I had my group of friends that were in my class. Um, I remember Leroy Nelson. He was an older student. He coached us um, for athletics in um, Car House. I remember... Um, Athletes like Leslie King, Michelle Johnson, I think Martin McDougall, we all, we all participated um, in sports. And for my own class, I remember, of course, Carlotta Curry, Richland Abrams, Yvonne Clement, um, Melanie Huntley, Michelle Mosley Huntley, and, and a lot more persons. But on any given day, I would have been interacting with any one of those persons. And yeah, Mackenzie High School is always, always one of the best memories I would take forever. Nicely said. Ms. Allen, would you like uh, to tell us um, a, a little bit of what was life like 20 years ago for you compared to today? Um, interesting, you should ask. Um, 20 years ago, um, I was like, maybe just migrated from um, Guyana. So when I left Guyana 20, 21, 22 years ago, I was a banking officer. Today, I'm now working in a completely different environment. I'm working in a programmatic aspect. I'm serving clients that are street homeless. And it's a completely different task for what I had left 20 years ago. And but I can say without a doubt that it's something that's more rewarding. It's 
fulfilling, it's educating, and above all, it's a humbling kind of job. And in addition to that, as you just mentioned, at this point of my life, I'm now preparing to transition into the legal profession, having just completed um, my successful completion of the New York State Bar Examination. I'm in the process of you know, being admitted um, to practice and hopefully I will be bringing the same zest and zeal to the legal profession that I've portrayed in, in the other professional areas of my life. Well, congratulations on successfully completing that exam. Ms. Allen, what inspired you to get into the legal field? And what advice would you give to a young person who is aspiring to be just like you? Um, well, actually, Andrew, me getting into the legal field is a kind of a spin-off of a random conversation. Um, I was having this conversation with one of my very good friends and brother, um, he also is a former McKenzie High School student, Robin Gittins. And I was explaining to him, we were talking about my passion, you know, for advocacy for others. And in terms of the way I feel service oriented type of person I was. And he suggested, say, why don't you just be a lawyer? Um, you know, that's the ultimate. There's no other profession by which you can advocate for others and ensure that justice and is, is brought to the underserved. And I listened to him at the end of that conversation. I left unknown to him. I went and did some research. I took the, um, the LSAT, which is the entry exam you need to be admitted to um, law school. Mm -hmm. And then I got admitted. And then I called, I called him and I said, Robin, I'm a law student. So that was some um, 2016. And here I am now four years, five years later successfully completing that journey and now in preparation to engage on a new level of advocacy because that's what I think this is about. No. And with respect to what advice I would give to young persons who would um, aspire to be like myself. First and foremost, I'd be honored, I'd be humbled if someone listening to this, in, after listening to this interview today would decide that yeah, if she can do it, I can do it. Because that's my goal. My goal is to inspire others. So I would say to young people, we hear all this talk about self-love. I would say, yes, let's talk about self-empowerment. Let's focus on the self because it's okay to focus on the self and we can focus on the self without being selfish. And, without, and at the same time, we can still be selfless. Because if you're not empowered, if you're not self-empowered, how then are you able to help others? So I would say to the young people, keep your eyes on whatever your goal is. Focus on improving yourself. Yourself must be the priority. And when, once you are elevated, once you're you take yourself to a next level, then you can assist someone else. You can bring someone from where they are to another level. So I say all this to say that the self is the first and the most important priority. And after the self, then we can help others. But at the same point in time, I do not want um, someone to interpret this to mean that the self means you must be arrogant or you must be ignorant of the fact that there's a supreme being who is the omnipotent person above all others. Hey man, he's getting into a little bit of preaching there as well. I, you're thinking about becoming a pastor? Listen, it's funny you say that because I know a good friend who said, um, stay, you're always studying, you're always in school. What's next? Are you going to go into theology? Well, um, not really. <laughs> okay, well, I need all the prayers I can get. I need all the legal help I can get. So you know what? I'll be keeping your number as close as possible in my phone. So your transition is from the big bank in Guyana to working with the homeless as a program analyst. And now you're looking into getting into the legal fee advocated for the underprivileged in New York. Congratulations. Nice storyline. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. I'm humbled way, and blessed. Way to go. Way to go. Very proud of you. Um, 
What advice do you think we can give to a young person in Guyana as a group or as an organization to influence change in that individual life? Like what advice or assistance through your own lens? Um, well, through my lens, uh, just I think a few years ago, I was um, a participant member of the, um, the MHS Alumni Association that we had functioning out of Brooklyn. And we made a lot, you know, a number of successful ventures we did, but um, it kind of fell by the wayside because persons got carried away doing, you know, their own personal um, personal work. Like I myself, I went off into to the classroom so I could no longer focus in that aspect. But the what I would like to see um, coming out of us as a group as a matter of fact, I think I just saw um, Melanie Gaskin, Benjamin asking the question on the MHS Reconnecting Facebook page, what do we, what's the purpose of this group? I, um, I kind of would like to see something of like a big brother, big sister type of program um, because that group is ripe with talent. I can say that. As a matter of fact, I was actually um, very um, elated when I saw one of your earlier interviews where you interviewed someone that was a barber. Um, so I say this to say that no matter whatever is the career path that you're going to choose, you can be successful in that path. And we have all those different talents sitting in this bucket called the MHS Reconnecting page. If we can maybe match up, pair up, each one of us with some student or something, and we can use the forum to give them pep talks, maybe give them encouragement on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And in some way, we might be able to positively influence their decision makings in terms of their maybe educational choices and their career choices, and maybe to a lesser extent, some of their social choices. Nice to say. Ms. Allen, I'll put you on the spot and have you be the voice of every single McKenzie High School past student. Give a tribute to one teacher, it could be any teacher, or give a vote of thanks on behalf of every past student of McKenzie High School. The floor is that would be, yours. <laughs> that would be putting me on a spot because Definitely, because there are so many different teachers that I would like to give a shout out to personally. I don't know if the the um the sentiments is shared by each and every one of the other you know alumni, but for me, the persons that I know were really a push to getting me to where I'm, I'm today. It would be remiss of me to acknowledge my successes today, actually, without acknowledging their efforts. So I would say for one, Mrs. Gloria Britton, she was um, senior mistress and then headmistress during my tenure at the um, McKenzie High School. She was very, uh, very, very, very instrumental in pushing me towards doing certain subjects when I tried to dodge them for the exams. Then um, secondly, there was um, Mr. Johnson, I can't remember his first name for some reason. He taught accounting and then he was also the headmaster mm -hmm. in the class um, at the time. He too was instrumental in his own or an orthodox manner in inspiring me to do better because I was like maybe at the highest point of my academic performance. And he would tell my grandmother, oh, if she does not improve, I'm not promoting her. So for me at that time, I was like, what is he saying? Is he crazy? I'm hmm. doing the best. I'm doing the best. But now looking back at it, that was just his unorthodox manner and method of trying to encourage me to be the best that I can be. And um, thirdly, I think I would also have to thank Brother Remington Williams. Uh, Brother Remy, as he's called, I... I remember today when I was completing McKenzie High School, when I was leaving the sixth form, um, upper six, Brother Remy gave me a handwritten note. And this note was a note, it was kind of giving me some kind of instructions on what to expect in adult life. 
at telling me that I'm going forward into the world of work. I'm going forward into the world of adulthood. And one, the one sentence that's, that sticks out to me to this very day was, beware of the wolves in sheep clothing. So I would like to say that thanks to all those teachers and to the many other teachers that, um, whose name I might not have mentioned, oh, Santi Clark, um, Ms. Bavel, the maths teacher, and all the others. Yeah, those teachers um, were teachers that took teaching not only in the classroom, they took it outside of the classroom. They, they kind of took on the role of like parenting us as students. So yeah, I'm very, 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 and forever grateful to Mackenzie High School, the teachers and to the experience it has exposed me to. Nice to said. I'd like to make a deal with you. I've been trying to get Miss Gloria Britton to come on this show for over 12 months. Okay. <laughs> what can we do to get Miss Gloria Britton on? Miss Gloria Britton, I don't know. I'll ask <laughs> one of her nieces. <laughs> we have them all in the alumni group. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it'll be such a privilege and an honor to have her on. Uh, Miss Gibson has made, you know, there's so many great, remarkable teachers. And the good thing about it is that there's so many students, Mr. Kwamina, Mr. Right. Daniels, there's so many teachers who have touched, shaped, and influenced, changing our little lives in so many different ways. We yeah. may have not have gotten along with them many years ago, but the tide has changed. We're all adults now. We're mature individuals. And yes, it's so definitely. nice to have more teachers come on the show. It's a nice show. I would like to think so, blowing my own horn. I'm pleased, <laughs> I'm pleased to notice you recognize Mr. Devon Williams. Yeah. Devon is a very good exactly. friend of mine who was a barber and a DJ and this and that. Okay, and I don't life. remember his name, but I was just impressed with the interview. Yeah, very nice. So let's let's get something started. Let's reach out to Miss Melissa Smith. I'm gonna yeah. call her out. We need Miss Well. Britain. You got John Quill. <laughs> you got Judith. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's get Miss Britton on. Miss Faith Allen, on behalf of everyone at the McKenzie School Alumni Association, North American Chapter, and of course, the Let's Talk Show, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for sharing your time and your experience with us. It's been a very nice conversation. Thank you for your friendship, and I look forward to talking to you in the near future. Good night. Thank you so much, Andrew. And um, to just give one step back, um, when you asked what... Uh, um, I would like to see going forward or a way that we could better um, help students. Um, one thing that struck, um, stuck with me in um, my experience is that during the high school period, the one thing they never really taught us is some of the experiences, the adult world experiences that we should um, like prepare our minds to encounter because mm -hmm. I was naive as a student and I thought that once you have your education, that's all it takes to succeed. But there are many other social, political factors and other stuff that maybe we can coach during, through the same Big Brother, Big Sister program. We can enlighten students about all these other different dimensions that they are to life, at, you know, outside of just your education and your school life. Very nice to say. I think we'll leave it there. Famous word of Mr. Thomas. Dress the way you want to be addressed, and yes. your attitude determines your altitude in life. Correct. Along with your academic achievements and so on. Good night, Miss Allen. Stay, uh, stay safe. Follow all the public health guidelines, and uh, we hope to talk to you again. Yes, thank you, future. and you do the same. Good night. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. God bless. Bye. <laughs>